Oh, very cool. Howdy, folks. Welcome to the first episode, or first chapter, almost. I guess it's the first episode of the Book of Boba Fett, entitled Chapter 1 at this point. Um, it'll probably get a real title if it's like The Mandalorian, right? The Mandalorian would come out with, like, chapter names or episode names, but uh, numbers. No, no names until a little, a little bit later. Um, but it does say in the description that Boba Fett holds court. Okay. We first, uh, we last saw Boba Fett at the end of The Mandalorian. Uh, Fennec and he uh, had just taken control of Boba Fett, or Boba Fett's, Jabba the Hutt's uh, old palace, Jabba's palace. Um, and uh, they, he'd taken his seat, and she'd, just, you know, taken a, a little bit of a seat next to him, essentially on the, his, the arm of his chair, with, kicking back with some a drink, uh, and looked like they were settling in. So I guess this, uh, this season's going to be all about... Um, the trailer implied a little bit of backstory about how he escaped, maybe. It might all be in the first episode, just him kind of giving a little exposition, or it might be sprinkled throughout. I don't know. Um, and I'm trying to overcome my bitterness, uh, as I've mentioned before, like on the trailer. Um, I want the Boba Fett story, but I wanted the Mandalorian story uh, series to continue as well, so I'm, I'm a little bitter that we have to wait another year for the next season of The Mandalorian just so we can get this special in. But I, I don't know if this can be a continuing series or just a special uh, you know, a certain number of episodes, like like a lot of the stuff that uh, they've done for Marvel. Um, uh, I'm just a little bitter. I, I mean, I still enjoy it. I just, gosh, I really want the Mandalorian back. And we might get Din Djarin, because in the trailer, it, it sounded like we heard his voice uh, talking to Boba Fett, so maybe he'll appear in here. Uh, I don't. Obviously, I don't think he's going to be a dominant figure in this. It's Boba Fett series, but let's find out, I guess. Here we go. Lucasfilm. Oh, that cool Star Wars intro as well. Nice. That's kind of an old school. Is this going to be that clip they released with the spider robot thing? No, more of it. Okay. I guess it wasn't a clip. It was part of the trailer. There's a sliding throne. An area I don't think we've seen. Oh. He's getting some regeneration in here to help him out because he had some nasty scars and things. Maybe it's uh, healing him up. Oh, very cool. Oh, memories from the prequel series. When we saw the um, Camino, uh, I just got a flashback to how we saw its end in the, the Bad Batch. If, if, if you're not watching the Bad Batch, I don't know why you're watching this, but um, unless you just hate animation. Uh, but seeing the scenes in the Bad Batch where it came to its end were pretty sad and pretty traumatic. It looks like uh, Boba's remembering his life and how he got to where he is now, which is cool. It'll give us, hopefully... This will be the exposition we've been looking for. Oh, yeah, it is. How did he get out? Oh, air. Okay, cool. Okay, so we haven't seen him crawl yet. We're about to do that, but yeah, I had forgotten there was a stormtrooper in there, but definitely a stormtrooper fell through, right? Or fell in as well. And he used his air oxygen to, to replenish his supply since it was running low and then used it to accelerate the flamethrower or to you know to give the fuel the oxygen fuel necessary for the flamethrower to burn and use that to burn out of this thing wow that's um that's tough that's uh that's <laughs> boba fett is one tough sob and we know that Oh, yeah, he dug himself out of the Sarlacc. Got out and collapsed. And the jaw will come and collect, right? <laughs> yep, here they are. Okay. Did they just take it all before he even wakes up because he's unconscious? I thought he was aware that they took it. I mean, like he was a willing participant, like he traded for something or something. Let's find out. Oh, yeah, he's awake. Well, not for long. <laughs> okay, yeah, so they just stole it. So we're going to have to get explanation as to why he didn't just go hunt them down to get it, right? And then the sand people find him. And one of the things we learned from the Mandalorian, thankfully, was that these people are far, their culture is far more sig uh, substantial than what we've come to learn. They're not just, you know... Um, mindless, aggressive natives. They have a culture, they have a society. 
So it might, might be part of their culture to uh, rescue people like him or integrate them. Similar to how the Mandalorians have the foundlings, right? Looks like there were already worms eating him. Did you see that? As they were feeding him like some goo from a worm, which I imagine is something to help with his, you know, liquid problems, his, his moisture, uh, perhaps. But um, there was like a worm wiggling out of his shirt, too. Ugh. Okay, so not necessarily a foundling, but more of a prisoner. Well, we're really getting a look at how the, his face was so damaged. Not only did the some of the acid leak through probably from the stomach uh, of the Sarlacc, but the exposure has done a number on his skin. Because he survived, did they like treat him with a little more respect that he was able to survive? He's pretty tough. Maybe he'd make a good uh, addition to their, their tribe or something. Stranger in a strange land. That makes sense. Oh, the kids get to beat up on him? Is that what's going on here? And then the leader sees this and... Hmm. It does, definitely looks like younger uh, Tuscan warriors, younger sand people are, are beating him up now. Looks like we have more prisoners. Is he going to escape before this thing attacks? <laughs> yeah, if he can defeat this thing, they might gain some, you know, get, that might give him uh, sand cred. Uh, You have to deal with that thing, Boba. Okay. Is this when the leader changes his mind about him? Oh, no. Sending one of his warriors off for one-on-one -on -one combat? Yep. Kind of expected Boba would win that fight. Guess not. They can't do much about the fact that the uh, actor is... Age-wise might be fine, but he's a bit... Bigger in the midriff than Boba clearly was in the movies. But not much I can do about that. Who am I to talk, right? Specs. Yeah, we're pretty sure that Finnick was with him. Going to be with him for the long haul. Here she is still here, so. Very cool. Know you're on your way. So the lieutenants and the other regional bosses and so forth have come to, as she says, pay their respects, and he's going to gear up. Is he going to get in all his armor? I guess he is. Very cool. Leave, <laughs> May you never leave, Mosa. That can be taken as a compliment, saying we love having you here, we, we love you, you stay around forever, or it could be a threat. Um, you're going to die here, and soon. <laughs> Is you a compliment? Yeah. Understanding, uh oh. Misunderstanding. The mayor's heartfelt welcome. Yeah. The mayor knows that there's a chance that whoever does this is going to die, and he didn't want to be there. That's a no. Oh, he's going to go talk to the mayor in person, probably. Yeah, he's going to go to him. I keep an eye. Is this where he gives the compassion line? You are loyal to both your Would you be loyal to me if I were to spare you? Cool. Yeah, he's coming to pay a visit. <laughs> hey, the bar. Cantina. <laughs> he definitely is doing things differently than she would do. Fennec would do. Fennec is definitely like, what are you doing? <laughs> you are always welcome. As it is yours now. You're Actually, they didn't do anything to your helmets. <laughs> huh. Yours looks shinier than mine. Ah, uh, he understood that that was how they pay off the boss, I guess. And she didn't know that. All right. I intend to rule with respect. There we go. And here's the attack we saw in the trailer. Where did those two guards go? There they are. And they are loyal. Cool. I guess with those cards, it's a case of we're loyal to the throne, whoever sits in it. Panic. Alive. Mm -hmm. He wants to question him, of course. We do the back of the Got the parkour guys working overtime. You only need one alive. Ah, we get more of the dreams, okay. 
And the two of them are chained together. Okay. Let's make it harder for one of them to run away. Where are they going? Okay. Better not be what I think it is. It's not uh, Luke's aunt. No, wait a minute. This is after. Oh, never mind. Wait, this. My God, my timing's messed up. I thought this was the Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, series. No, no, no. This is after. Long after. So Luke's long gone and his aunt and uncle are long dead. Does seem to be the same place, though. Or at least a similar one. That only looks like a moisture farm, right? They were to go out there just to witness that? No other reason? He's really good at it. Uh, Boba's not. <laughs> oh, I don't think he's supposed to drink, is he? They really think a youngling and one of these dog thingies can uh, can keep two prisoners? I guess since they're chained together, it makes it harder for them to run away. But I mean, you'd think there'd be a, a risk that they could overpower these two? Hmm. Oh, what's this? Uh, is it alive? It is alive. Wow. The guard's going to grab his bag and run, right? Oh, very cool. Oh, you brave kid, you're stupid. Oh, if he saves this kid's life, man. He's free. We didn't see it, but I presume he snapped the other guy's head off, which is why the chain, or the leg off, I guess, or something, which is why the chain is free. That's why the Tuscans accepted him. You're going to give him the water? Yep. That's his way of saying you're part of us. You're one of us now. It also explains why he couldn't go after the, the Jawa, because he was immediately picked up by these guys. Oh, well, pretty good introduction. Uh, Robert Rodriguez. Um, let's watch some of these. We love the concept art, don't we? Oh, I see. In the concept art, the shields were meant to be much more connected than they were, but I guess it didn't really matter, but... I see. That was Jennifer Beals? The head of the uh, cantina? I, I got the impression, I, I'm guessing it was, because I got the impression when I saw her that she looked really familiar. I'm still not 100% certain why they led them to here to see this. Because I know the next thing they, they did was they were searching for water, so I guess... It's weird, because if they... If they knew that there would be water sources nearby because there was a moisture farm there, the moisture farm had then been abandoned, or at least I, I imagine the people inside were killed. The last guy looked like he was killed. Why didn't they just go in there and get water? Why did they have to dig for it? Hmm. Why is there a protocol droid head there? <laughs> Obviously, that couldn't, still, that couldn't still be there, right? It wasn't there in the original shot because he did comment that he needed one, so why would he have destroyed one? Okay, that seems to be it. All right. Young Boba Fett, Daniel Logan. Okay, so they did reshoot some stuff, or is that, is that the person who played the young Boba Fett in the prequels? I don't know. Ah, one of the uh, Doc Strassi was Robert Rodriguez. That's cool. That's very cool. Very, very cool. All right, no, I, this was a good introduction. It, it did what it needed to do. It set the world up where he is now the boss, and what he has to deal with, at least to some degree. It gave us the flashbacks in the form of his dreams of what happened to him, how he got out of that Sarlacc. That was, that was the easy part. Everybody thought that would be the hard part. That was the easy part. It's after getting out, he was so exhausted that the Jawas were able to steal his armor, and then the, uh, the Tuscan warriors, the Sand People, were able to capture him and use him as a slave. So basically, he had become a slave to them to do the you know the hard work that they didn't either was too dangerous or they didn't want to do um but then of course he's such a great warrior that he was able to kill that creature that was threatening the youngling uh and uh and let the youngling bring home the trophy of the head and and the head of this tribe gave him the water which is i guess his way of saying yeah okay you're one of us we, we've accepted you or at least you're on par with us you know not necessarily one of us but you're uh you're no longer a slave. 
maybe. I don't know. I guess we'll find out in the next episode. You didn't order them back into chains, so. Um, very good. Very good setup. Uh, no Din Djarin in this one. I had hoped that we might have seen a little bit of that, but hey, I guess they needed to really spend the time to uh, Wesley Kimmel as the Tuscan kid. Don't tell me that's like Jimmy Kimmel's son or something, is he? Because a Kimmel is not a really common name. I wonder if he is. I'll have to look that up. Um, so maybe we will get some of him, because I'm pretty sure we heard him in the trailer. That really sounded like him asking Boba Fett about... Uh, uh, the fact that he's taken, you know, that he heard that he's taken over his uh, his old boss's throne. Uh, I thought that was his voice, so hopefully we'll see him again. Uh, I don't have any hopes that we're going to see Baby Yoda. That's a Mandalorian thing. I I, I don't think we're going to see Grogu anywhere. Um, but to at least see in one episode a little bit of Din Djarin would be nice. Fennec was awesome, of course. Um, Ming Nolan in general is awesome, but. Having the character, you know, running around and, and uh, getting those two assassins and killing one and taking the weaker one back with him, <laughs> back with her, uh, it makes a lot of sense. And she hadn't yet um, captured or, or hadn't yet brought him back uh, and Boba was recuperating. So I guess in the next episode, he's going to come out of his tank again and maybe they'll, they'll be questioning the, the assassin. I'm sure Fennec's questioning him a bit now already. But it was really cool how those two guards are very loyal to the throne. They, their their culture, or at least their their own history, is we are loyal to this throne. This is our home. We will protect whoever's in charge of this home. It's not for us. We're not the ones who seek the, the throne. But whoever has it, we will protect them, and, and literally with their lives, uh, as you, we saw in this fight. I think that's really cool. I think that's really, really cool. Because um, you need people like that. In the real world, too, there are people like that. Let's look at the United States president, right, the Secret Service. They protect the office. They don't care who it is. They may never have voted for the guy, never would have ever voted for the guy, but they will take a bullet for that person. And I think that's just true loyalty. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, true loyalty to the office, right? To, the, to, the, to the, uh, the structure, to the society, essentially, if you want to call it a society within that palace. Very cool. All right, guys, let me know what you thought uh, of this one, of this introduction. Was it adequate? Did the escape meet your expectations? Was it too quick? <laughs> not enough detail um, and what was your favorite part of this and what are you looking forward to in the future I, I'd love to ch chat about that with you guys in the comments so let me know what you think and I'll uh, catch you next time bye bye